Okay, so we're working on Zentangle today. Zentangle is a form of meditative doodling that has patterns and tangles put together to form a Zentangle. And in your packet, you will find a little template that looks like this. And it's a space landscape because I had to choose a theme for our project this week. And this has some interesting elements to it. You have uh, places you can put your patterns in the hills and Rocky Mountains. And then there's also this planet here and the moon and, and a sun and another planet. So there's some places that you can put some interesting patterns. So the first thing that you need to do is you need to choose some patterns. And I put some suggestions. Now, obviously, you don't have to go with the suggestions that are in your packet, but there's some ideas. And you need to choose those patterns and decide where you're going to put them on your template. And when you do that, you know, maybe you'll, maybe you'll get organized and you'll call this one pattern number one and number two, and then you'll go, well, I think I'm gonna put pattern number one there and do it really light so it doesn't mess you up. Okay, so you're gonna put different patterns there. But as you're deciding which patterns you're gonna use, I want you to think about value because value is important in this. Uh, there's a principle that is, uh, in art and it is that similar objects tend to become smaller and lighter as they're farther away. So if you want to create a sense of distance, then you need to consider that. So in this picture, there's an obvious background forms, background shapes, some mountains, mid-ground shapes, and foreground shapes. So your background shapes are probably going to be lighter in value. Your mid-ground shapes will be a little bit darker and your foreground shapes will be the darkest if that's the principle that you're using. I mean, obviously this is your creation and you get to decide how you want that to happen. I tried for some of that on mine. I don't know if I like my ring <laughs> around my planet, but it was fun to do. So you need to also choose patterns that you think kind of go with what you're drawing. So for instance, I liked a pattern of stars with my moon or some swirls on my planet. I tried to make my, some of these mountains back here more rocky in their texture. Okay, so keep those things in mind as you're coming up with your patterns. I also want you to take into consideration drawing some grid shapes on your picture because this helped me get organized when I was making my picture. And I just took a pencil and drew very lightly and came up with sort of a grid that I wanted to follow to put my design in, okay? And that one, I think I did columns. Over here, I think I did grids on my... And then, when I went to put my Zentangle pattern in, it made it easier for me to do that, okay? Uh, with my planet up here, I did more of like a free form approach, so I didn't do any grids on that. And I don't know if you'll want to do any grids up in the sun's rays or not, but if you can add grids somewhere to your picture, it certainly helps you keep organized and be able to put your patterns in there so you can kind of relax. So you'll want to lightly sketch those or decide to freeform, and then consider your values. Of course, I put my darkest values towards the front. And my sun, I wanted to be my lightest value, 
because it is the brightest thing in the sky. Even here on Earth, it is the brightest thing in the sky. So I left mine white. Of course, you can do yours however you want, but consider doing it white. Uh, it creates a nice focal point. So, and once you've decided on your patterns and you've got your grid in there and you start working on it, don't rush yourself. Make sure that you take your time drawing your patterns in. You're gonna use your marker. I put a Sharpie pen in your kit. And take your time doing your lines. Take your time making your pattern look nice, okay? It's supposed to take a while. You're supposed to relax and enjoy the process of making your Zentangle picture. I can't remember what I did for these. I think I did something like that. But take your time, and they can be either really complex or really simple, however you decide. You might have your more complex designs towards the front and then your simpler designs towards the back. That's another suggestion. And then when you're finished with this, I'd love to see a picture of it, but also I put in your kit a little sketchbook. Now this sketchbook, make sure you write your name on it so you don't get it mixed up with you know, your brother or your sister. There's my name, Mrs. Feek. And then you're going to draw your own Zentangles in here. And maybe you want to make like a leaf. Like maybe you'll see a leaf outside and you'll wanna make it, and you can draw it or you can trace it. It's up to you. And then you know, I partition it off maybe. And then each of those little sections can be a Zentangle, right? And I haven't even thought of what I'm gonna put in these. I'm just meditatively adding something to it. And fill up this little sketchbook with some fun little Zentangles. I've seen people do really cool Zentangles with like birds and you know all kinds of things. Maybe you want to do something simple in there, just repeating a pattern, right? So I'm gonna add a list of some ideas and of course you can check on the internet too, but a leaf, is a really good thing to disentangle. Feather, raindrops, a star, your pet, a flower, the sun, or you could even just freeform one in there. But the whole purpose behind doing Zentangles is to teach you about patterns, about repetition, about texture. It helps you to be more creative. It helps with your hand-eye coordination, your drawing improvement, and it also helps you relax. And who doesn't need to be able to relax nowadays? So go ahead, do some Zentangles. Enjoy them. Email me if you have any further questions. Thank you.